to get you guys up to speed, we are creating, looking at how we could create the similar functionality of the PDC fly controllers menu navigation button. It's a quite complex component where when you press on the lower edge, you are basically changing between whether you see presets or cameras. And on the side, you are paging forth and back within presets and cameras. And on the upper edge, you are cycling what you see in the menu section up here. We have in the previous episode created four variables to drive this and they are out here. So watch that if you are interested, but to get you up to speed, if we click on this one, this variable, we have the ability to like manipulate it from within reactor. This is what we need to get onto the button. But if I change here, the value to cameras, to presets, to cameras, to presets, notice that it's changing what you see on, on the four buttons here. Um, so let's see if we can have that view. So we are basically changing this content around. You see that already. And over here, you also see the visibility is changed between these two because we are using this active if condition for layers and presets. If we go into cameras, you can see that each layer inside is driven by a different variable, the one called cam page. And just like that, if I click that variable, I can change between these two layers inside the cameras layer. If I go to presets, I likely likewise have the preset page variable and that is also also changing visibility where well, we just don't see it visually in the tree unless we go here select presets and then we can go back to this page and then you can see yeah also within the presets I'm changing around and then finally the same thing is happening for the menu up here on top but the menu itself is not conditioned by any variable so it's always visible we are only changing the select page variable which is what we see in the menu on the top. By the way, the menu was like automatically created slightly differently by an automated function called create pages. We did that by dragging across the components, right click, create pages, and then we had a nice menu created for us in the tree. So that was super useful and how we got to the point where we are right now. But now we want to zoom in on this button and see how we can customize its behavior to, to do this uh, sort of management. I'm assuming that you may have seen some of this in some other training material because it is quite advanced. So um, I'll, I'll just uh, throw it in, in your head and then see um, if it's useful. I hope it is. Then that's super great. Otherwise, um, yeah. <laughs> so in this case, because we, we need this button to actually manipulate four va variables, right? So it, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me, at least, to set a, an IO reference in the very top. The IO reference is typically used to have this is the parameter. This button, knob, fader, joystick is changing. It's not two parameters. It's not three or 15. It is one parameter. And that's super cool to set one place because quite often that parameter is used multiple places, uh, typically to, to get a value for feedback, typically to, to specify which aspect of the variable you want to, to change with the events. I also don't want to have any behavior coming to it from my, my master behaviors. Master behaviors are like a prepackaged functionality of a button that brings together feedback and, and actions. What happens when I press it? Does it cycle? Does it set a value? Does it do something else? So now I just have a completely blank button, right? Completely blank. I'll show more. And just to calm you guys, I would just quickly put some stuff into the title field here. So let's just say menu. And it's it's set right here. Um, in fact, if you look at the PTC fly, we do use an icon and we could use something like that icon. That would be kind of neat, wouldn't it? So let me see. Don't we have an icon thing? Modifier icon? No, that's not it. State icon. No, no, no. Data source. Data source for images. Inline icon. Or is it just icon? Click here. Then we can pick one. Okay, so let's see. What is it we are going for? Um, in, in a very generic sense, we could pick this one, change Im image filters to invert. Okay, so now we have nice graphics for our little menu. We also want to have some color on it. So let's give it a color of some sort. We like this one. Uh, often I use eyes for navigation keys. So that is in place. And um, it is currently not lighting up. That's because we need an intensity. We set that to dimmed. So color is only active and shown if you have chosen an, ident uh, an, an intensity. We have like on, dimmed, and off. And uh, only dimmed and on will show any, any color. Off is, of course, the button is turned off. So that is now being set as default feedback. 
And um, we usually also create some sort of um, uh, conditional feedback. Conditional feedback is depending on something like if a variable has a certain value and, and so on. And in a previous video, we have seen how uh, if we wanted to change the intensity to on, which is typically what you do here, then you could have an active if so that um, it is basically relating to a trigger that you're having on the button. But we can't do that just yet because, so let's just remove this and move on. Event handlers is where it's at. This is um, the place where we are creating the functionality of that button. So we'll just create a new event handler and uh, I need to have a name for it. And that would be toggle cam presets. So we'll call it that. And I have it here. It's a handler type binary. So when I push, when I push it down, not when I release it. Uh, it has to be the bottom edge. I want the bottom edge to do this. I want it to... I think cycle up and roll over might be the most... It, it's going to work. I have two options, so that's going to work. Cycle up and roll over. And then the set values, you'll know from a different episode that this is where we would um, basically pick our variable and then say for the the uh, the variable that we are using is cam or preset, that one. And then we need a modifier called all. This is something you need to know. But basically set values means what are the values that we should cycle? The ones that we should set. And that is coming, th this is a way to basically take it out of the variable. So we now get cam and pre, cam and pre, but we could also type it in as literal values. Then because we did not specify an IO reference for the behavior, we also need to set this up here. It feels like this is the first thing we should have done just to like frame the whole thing. But basically, this is the variable that we are going to change. As we are pressing the bottom edge, we are cycling up and rolling over over all the options. So we can now test that. And you'll see that this is in fact what is apparently happening. Cam or pre is rolled over like that as I'm pressing. Now, on the upper edge, I need exactly the same thing, but I need that for the menu. So let's just quickly do that. Menu, toggle, or cycle. I mean, again, this is just whatever you want. And um, menu cycle, yes. So uh, go in here, handle type is also binary. Back down, edge filter is now the top edge. We'll set the mode to cycle up and roll over. And we will set values in the same way. It's a variable called select page. And then in here, we would pick that variable select page because that's the one that we are changing. I could now test, are we, are we done? Somehow it feels like it's not fully there. Um, top edge of the button. Lower edge is cycling cam or pre. Upper edge is not doing anything to this one. Oh, ah, I forgot the modifier. There you see the um, the issue. I need to edit this one again. Sorry about that, guys. I forgot to say that I need all of these options. And then I can now cycle this. Yeah, now you see it's cycling. Page one, two, three, four. You can sort of see it happening, you know click here. All right, that works. Um, okay, so now I have maybe a chance to just quickly show you what would have happened if we took literal values instead. And if you remember, you go back to the variable here, you see the literal values are the ones in this column. So page one, page two, page three, page four, if I want a different order of things, I could change that by setting this. Let's go back to the behavior, show more, open up our, let me see, menu cycle. And the set values here, edit this one. Instead of importing them by the all, I choose literal values. I select like four of them and I type in first page one. Then I want to have page three. I want to have page two and finally page four. All right, submit. And I now try again. So let's just see page two, page four, page one, page three, page two, page four. So that actually works as well, but it's now hard coded before it was imported and importing it means that if I had added page number five, automatically it would be a part of the whole cycle. So there is a really good reason why you would normally go with the other one. Let's just keep this because for now it's fine and you have been educated to more clever scenarios. Now we are going to make the paging forth and back for the preset uh, pages. So we'll create an event handler, which is called um, cam page. 
And the cam page, we just open this up. Now maybe we'll just go down here and before doing anything else or basically selecting binary, we'll just pick the parameter that we want to set, which is the variable called cam page right here. And then we choose binary type on act down edge filter. Now, if we left and right would sound good, but it is still just going to cycle for us. So I would now say, let's pick the left edge here. Set mode would be to cycle down. And my set values would have to be the same as um, cam page plus the all modifier. Submit. It's now in place. OK. So that's what's happening. When I press the left edge, it's cycling down on cam page through all the options of cam page. In fact, I need to change the name of this to cam page up. Sorry, down. Because it's really, it's, it's, this is the event handler that is changing it in the downwards direction. So I have one called cam page up. Create this guy. So it has handling binary. I'm just copying it now, but I'm now changing the right edge using the right edge instead. Set mode would be cycle up and the set values would be the ones from the variable cam page, then modifiers all submit. And I of course need to also have the parameter here. So that is cam page submit. All right. And then we are in place with this one as well. Now let's see if this one works. If I press the edges, now we have only these two values of cam page, these two values over here, but I'm pressing the, the left edge and I'm pressing the right edge and I'm apparently going up and down as I'm doing so. So the thing is, when I'm right here, I am still, when I'm pressing this, you can see I'm still changing cam page. So we don't want that. We want it to change the preset page instead. So we are um, going back into our event handler here show more of this and we are basically taking cam page down and up and then we are replicating those we can do the exact same thing but just choose the different variable so again to uh, make the confusion complete on you guys i'm just uh, going to do this in json so um uh, i'll just show you that in in a sense this would be much quicker for me to just do in here copy this just um you know, these, these are my event handlers. I created four event handlers. They, they look pretty nice and tidy here, don't they? And now I am creating some that we call preset page up and preset page down. Whoops. I mean, these are still labels that I pick. And then I would uh, go here. Now I hold down Command D and I can select a few of these. That's a little editor trick that guys who knows VS Code is uh, familiar with. And we'll just type in preset page, super cool. And that actually means that I get it all right here. I save and now I have these, you know, additional two event handlers. Again, um, you could have copy paste, I'm uh, sorry, created new and just done all the same things. But now I have these pre page down, all set up and right already. So let's just go and check it. You see how, how quickly it can be to work in the JSON editor. So that's the, the choice for many of us. Now it is actually, as you can see, it is working. Look at preset page here. It is working as I'm pressing the edges. I am obviously also seeing changes up here going from page, uh, um, yeah, going through the, the different pages that is associated with the preset page that is like three pages. The thing is that I'm also seeing this for cam page. You know that? So cam page is changing too. Cam page is up and now I'm going down. And in a sense, this might not be an issue because, you know, if you're here, yeah, you're paging and then you're going here and you're paging. But in fact, let's say that you were on the camera page like here, you were on the first page, then you go to presets and you want to go to the last page, like page number three. Then you go back to your camera page and you're like, hey, what happened? I'm now on my second page. Why? How come? And then you go back to the first page and you go to the presets and then you realize you're on your second page. And then you begin to have the suspicion that something is actually happening underneath. Now, this is also pretty easy to fix because what we just need to do is to now edit the condition of these. We can have an active if condition, just like we have on layers and everything else, where we are basically saying, I only want this event handler to be active when we are on the, the variable called camera pre equals pre in this case, okay? 
let's just see. So if camera preset equals pre, then this event handler pre page down is active. Okay. And I can now do the same down here. Say active if, if that equals pre. Okay, submit. Okay, we got that in place. Then we go up here. So now we, I mean, we could check it now, but let's just finish it so that it's complete. Edit this one. It feels like a bug that it doesn't just give me that, but I need to type in here, press submit, press that one. But now of course I need to change the value to cam anyway. So, okay, just cam. So if it's cam, yes. And then cam page down, active if this is cam. Do we agree? Cam or pre equals cam. Cam or pre equals cam for the cam page up. That's looking great. Page down, page up here. Now let's try it with the simulation. Okay, so we are now on the presets. We should see this variable change, right? So I'm going down, I'm going up, and cam page is untouched. I click here, going down. Yeah, I, I can't go down, but I can go up. I see two, but preset page is untouched. So I can now be on the first camera page and preset page three. So if I click here, I'm on preset page three actually. I can go down to preset page one, go back here, go up to page number two, go back to presets, it's still on page number one. So we have achieved exactly what we want here. As a final touch, we'll work a little bit on the feedback on this button as well. So event handlers, now we have six event handlers that are specifically targeting certain events and what to do with them and conditioned by what other variables are in the system. That's, that's a lot of programming, I admit that, but it's also the way you can do so powerful things inside of Reactor. And by the way, most of the time, you guys will use our master behaviors and don't have to do these things yourself. But up here in the feedback, we can only have one at a time. We need to figure out, you know, how the, currently the, the button is just ice colored, but when I press it, it's not responding. And I would like it to, to just light up for like 300 milliseconds. That's a nice response, but we could also make it change color depending on whether we are in camera or preset domain. So let's, um, let's do that for fun. Just add a conditional feedback here and say, we want to have a different color on this one, like green. If um, we are, no, we could choose the amber if we are in the camera page. So we'll just do that. Currently that feedback is, is not visible to us because we need to have the active if condition set up. So here we have cam or pre equals cam. And if we use that, then this one will be lighting up in amber color as we are in that. So you see this conditional feedback is already functioning pretty well right there. Uh, then, of course, we could do a similar condition feedback for, for the preset situation, but that would be the same or just served by going to the default feedback and changing the ice color. So far, so good. The thing is that we have also a way to uh, to light it up with the, um, um, so, so to set, let me see, if I set in one here with uh, index 20, then I could say I want the intensity to be on when I have a certain trigger being activated. So that is a little more tricky. Let me see. We need to open up here and say in the behavior, if the last events, no, wait, it is events. And then now you need to know which of these events that we are talking about. I think, yeah, we'll just type in something right now because we have forgotten what it is. We need to go check that and then time to now, but we'll just complete this anyway. So if that is less than or equal to 300 milliseconds, I've shown this in a different video. So some of you may already know what I'm doing here, but I'm basically saying, and now I need to go check. Okay, when I'm pressing the lower edge, the toggling, toggling Camry, that's, that's the name of the event handler we use. So that's the one that we need to go back up here and then type into this one toggle cam pre. So when the event toggle cam pre, the time to current is less than 300 milliseconds. This is lighting up. And that's what you get right now. You see, I'm pressing the mouse down and releasing now. So press release now. So 300 milliseconds, it's lighting up. Unfortunately, it's not doing that on the other edges. So what I'm thinking, and this is absolutely freestyling because I don't know if it's going to work. But I'm thinking, what if we add an event handler that is just like light up? We call it light up like this, open up this, add a binary behavior to it. And then we would basically say, yes, this is on the act down. This is on any edge of the button. 
And we don't need a set mode because we're not really going to do anything. So we can just remove that. In fact, we don't have an IO reference. We don't have an active if. We don't have anything. But it, it this this event will be activated when we press the button on any edge. And other than that, it's not going to do anything. So I'm now going up here and I'm going back in here and I'm saying light up. That's the event I just created. Submit. Wow. It worked. I'm not sure I ever tried that before, but of course it works because this is the logic of the system that it would then pick that event up and use that to drive our feedback. Guys, this is all I have for you uh, in this second episode of building this button. We'll now compare it to Unisketch and we'll also look at how this has been integrated in the default PDC fly configurations.